terms of China being the, one of the world's centre of manufacturing, I think that that has impacted on the ways that artists are able to produce works. In fact, I know of many artists from New York who have decided to go to China to have their works manufactured. I think that this, um, the kind of factory structure, the ease with which you can have uh, high-end, uh, custom-made things created. I think that the cost is also another factor that artists can create things in China that they could never dream of producing here at factories in the United States. I think that that's one of the major ways that uh, you've seen the uh, industry in China impact upon the art scene. And of course this has had an, a flow-on effect to ways that artists also conceive of their studios, that there are artists in China that have enormous studios that would take your breath away. There is one artist, in fact, his name is Zhang Huan, and he established a studio outside of Shanghai, about 40 minutes drive from Shanghai, in an old textile factory. And he now has three complexes um, around that area and employs up to 100 people just constantly creating new works and so you might go to his studio one day and you might go a week later and there might be a completely different body of work being explored. So I think that that has had a kind of flow on influence as well. I think there are two artists that I would identify and both of them are in some ways from a younger generation. The first would be Cao Fei who is a young woman who lives in Beijing and I think that her project for the Venice Biennale involving Second Life is really a great um, introduction, I think, for us in terms of ways that art and technology can work together. And certainly the avatar that she created in her own likeness, of course, but I think also ways that she has in other works, uh, such as her photographs, uh, where she has shown people actually in the factories in China has been one of the few occasions we've seen artists engage with um, China's factories. You know, that's one of the funny things about uh, Chinese contemporary art that although you have this whole huge country devoted to manufacturing in many cases, it's something that you haven't seen appear in uh, Chinese artists' work. And the other artist I would mention is Yang Fudong, who uh, primarily wor uh, works in video and he, I think, creates these quite extraordinary films that have, that, that, that speak in two ways or two sides, there are two sides to them. On the, one, on the one hand, they're very much about the nostalgia of Shanghai as a wonderful place in the early uh, 20th century where uh, it was very much a cosmopolitan uh, centre, it was often referred to as the Paris of the East, and he is able to conjure up that kind of sensibility in his black and white films. And on the other hand, it speaks very much to Shanghai's emergence as a major financial centre in the region, and he, in some of his video works films, uh, really shows that emergence of this young, uh, urban, middle class, or yuppies, if you like, so that both these artists show in different ways the kind of changes that are going on in China, but in very unique ways.